Okay folks, welcome back. This should be video three. It may be the final video on the Valkyrie. I'm gonna get the carbs back in. And we're gonna fire it up, so let's get right to it. Okay, behind door number one, here's our finished carbs. You saw in the last video how we did that, so no need to beat that dead horse. Um, off camera, I'm not gonna do any of this on camera. It doesn't make any sense. You already saw how to take them out. It's just reverse of that, putting them back in. Off camera, I'm gonna get these all installed and uh, we'll get the throttle cables hooked up. And I'll bring you back to the point where I put my fuel can on the OSHA approved fuel can holder thingamajiggy up there. We'll throw some fuel to it and we'll fire it up and see how she runs. Alrighty folks, it's like many hours later. This thing's been fighting me, trying to correct things as we go along and uh, that's what I ended up doing. So it took me a little bit longer to get it all together. Um, of course, um, yesterday when I had this thing uh, set up where I could put the float bowl gaskets in and replace the number one float. I uh, had it upside down and I did a pressure test on it once the float was in. It passed the pressure test no problem and I did the same thing that you saw in video two in regards to checking the float bowl gasket integrity on all six carbs as I put the float bowls back on with a new float bowl gasket. My point is here that if you don't have all the capabilities to do that or you don't want to, you could always put fuel to these things when they're off the bike. You know, just level the carbs and put fuel to it and see that it uh, doesn't leak. Um, there's obviously always the potential that they do even the way I test it, but I've never had one leak, knock on wood, that um, uh, passed a pressure test um, and, uh, and then leaked after I put fuel to it. So. We're gonna give it a shot here and see what we got. So I think the first thing I need to do here is probably put fuel to it, right? Make sure that we are nice and patent or patent. See what happens. Now if it passes the pressure test, which it did, um, it's not gonna overflow the carbs unless there was a malfunction in the floats. Now those float uh, needles are all brand new. And again, it passed the test, so I don't believe that that would be a problem. All right, you know what? I gotta get the key, it's inside. So let me go get the key and we'll give it a shot. All right, of course, uh, I get fuel coming out the drain hose because I forgot to close one of the float bowls when I installed it. Number two on that side over there. So I just closed the float drain and we're good. Now I turned the idle down on this because I don't know where the hell it's at. So we're gonna go a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna have my hand here near the kill switch just in case. No choke right now. Of course. So she wants to go already. Turn the idle up a little bit. There's no enricher on right now. Remember before you heard like a exhaust leak? That's gone now. I figured that might have been a misfire. So that runs pretty good. No synchronization, no nothing. We're gonna get to that now in a minute. here shut the fuel off and I'm gonna go ahead and get the synchronizer hooked up I got to review the procedure because it's six cylinder and then we're gonna go ahead and sync this baby all right so this is how I do it at least on a Valk because it's a four bank four cylinder vacuum synchronizer which most of them are and I got six cylinders and the service manual recognizes that so the first step is they want you to hook up to one, three, five, and four. 
I'm chosen I'm choosing the number one bank for the third because that one's never going to change we're not going to remove number four either and I'll explain that here in a minute and remember four two four six are on the other side and one three five are over here so we're essentially checking all three on this side even though three is the base carb and non adjustable so we're going to be able to dial in one and five on this side and only number four on the other side and there's a reason for that well I'll tell you what the reason is the reason is when we hook up to the other side we're going to keep number four and number three hooked up and we're simply going to do two and six over there since we've already done four we bring two and six up to four and we're also monitoring three which is our base carb so we can bring all six of them up or the remaining carbs at that point uh, cylinders uh, to the same level so that's basically basically why why you got to do it that way so i'll get you set up a little bit better and uh, we'll go ahead and get started So you can see one is uh, pretty high, three which is our base, and number four are really close. So we got these four pretty good. I'd say they're definitely, definitely real close. Even number four on the other side, don't have to adjust it. One in five may be slightly high. It's a bunch of shit burning off of this now too. Okay, so I'm liking that. Now I'm going to switch them around, as I said before. Okay, so I renumbered the, uh, as you can see, I renumbered my gauges. Just the two of them, though. So I switched number one over to number two, and uh, number five over to number six. Remember, we keep uh, number three and four where they were. So essentially, we're just checking the last two. And we have a reference to number three, which is our base, and uh, number four, which we've already done. Six, let's do number two first. Two is high. Wrong screwdriver. Four. 
doors come up for some reason. We'll readjust that. Sometimes that happens when the vacuum changes. Two needs to go up. too much I guess. Number six needs to go up. Okay, I'm good with that. So essentially we're all synced now. That's where we're gonna leave it. And then we'll uh, let it sit a bit and fire it back up and then double check uh, how it runs. I'm not gonna twist any more of the screws. Speaking of screws, this is how you do it on these. Now carbs differ, but it's pretty much almost the same on all of them. These are super easy to get to, of course, because your uh, adjuster screws are right there. Um, uh, when you turn these adjuster screws in, you're closing the throttle butterfly. That means that the vacuum increases because the space that the vacuum impulse pulls through is less. Therefore, it increases that resistance, ergo that the vacuum goes up. So you turn it in to increase the vacuum on the synchronizer over there, and you turn it out to do the opposite. So this one is really, really easy to sync. As you can see, uh, on the inset clips that uh, she has really good intake pulse as opposed to everything else we've been working on lately and I think it says 1.6 millimeters of mercury variance between all of them when you're sinking them and we're almost dead nuts on all of them so we're well within that so yeah I'm happy with it we'll leave it there we'll put the caps back on the intake um, two of these will be utilized for the uh, fuel cock I like to tap that off too, and there's one, I have a little T thing anyway that the owner gave me. We're gonna tee it off uh, four and six most likely, and then it goes up to the fuel cock. And then, uh, yeah, so um, not bad. Um, I'm liking the way it runs. So uh, that's where we're at. Okie doke, let's get these guys off. I find uh, keeping these organized, you know, you'd get less confused. You got six cylinders and a four bank synchronizer. It's easy to get confused. So I like to label them like that. That way I don't get confused as easily. A lot of times I am easily confused. So yeah, we all know about that. Try her once more time. It looks good. Not that I would trust that necessarily. Yeah, I'm happy with it. We're going to leave it right there. Uh, she don't hang at all, and uh, she doesn't take a nosedive after a snap in the throttle, you know, and idle down and come back up with indicating that the slows are a little on the rich side. Remember, I put them at two and three eighths, not at two and a half. I'm sorry, I put them at two and a half rather, not at two and three eighths. And uh, I actually lost the little bit for the D shape uh, screws for my carb synchronizer tool, you know, the 90 degree tool. So I couldn't change these right now if I wanted to. I've been looking for this for the last 
two days off and on, probably spent an hour and a half, two hours looking for it in total, and I cannot find a thing. So I'm going to have to order another one. I did find uh, motosport.com stocks the bits separately, so I'm going to order one of those tonight or this afternoon or something. So now i got to get the coolant topped off here, and I don't have any Honda coolant, so we're going to have to go out and get that. But like I said, I checked it the other day, and it's, only, it's down about that far, so there's enough coolant in it to run it, but I certainly wouldn't run it very long that way, you know, like on the road. And I got a bunch of, you know, I need this for lights or something. So I wanted to get the base stuff done as far as the motor and the carbs go because that's the biggest job. You know, um, I, I think it usually takes me between 10 and 12 hours to totally do a do, do a total carb job, rather, for Valkyrie carbs. And I'm talking about breaking them down to bits, as you saw in video two. Cleaning everything, verifying everything, doing all the individual tests times six carbs, and then um, put them all back together, re-racking them, and then uh, putting them back on the bike. Um, so at least that long, maybe even 14 hours when you count the... Uh, time I had to spend on this thing trying to straighten stuff out um, that was kind of messed up as I went along to put them back in. Um, I'm still missing a hose from the breather uh, collector here that goes up to the air box. Um, I'll look in the kit and see if it's in there or the boxes he, provi he provided. Otherwise, I'll come up with something. It just sticks in there. I got to hook another one up too. You just reach in there and plug it in. It's not a big deal. His dog will not leave me alone for five minutes for crying out loud. He will not leave me alone for five minutes. I swear. He thinks I'm talking to somebody out here, so naturally he's got to come out and see. Okay, so I'm working on brakes too. I'm waiting on a brake uh, caliper kit for both the front brakes and the rear. It's the same kit. Uh, so two for the front, one for the rear. I've already taken care of the clutch. The clutch was done yesterday. That was a real mess. Uh, the slave cylinder, I'm really surprised I was able to save it. But uh, I got this working real well. It was full of dust, you know, pixie dust, magic dust from, uh, you know, when the fluid creeps past the seal because the seal goes bad because it was made in the last century, literally. And then all that fluid dries up and turns into dust, you know, that gray or tan colored dust. And it was a real mess. So I had to ultrasonically clean that about four or five different times over and over again to get that clean. But I got it rebuilt with a kit the owner provided, and uh, this was, as I pointed out earlier in another video, this is brand new, so that bled up. It took me a little while to bleed it up, but I got it bled up. The line was plugged, so I just bled it up out of the master cylinder and hit it, and it popped through whatever was plugging up the line. And then I flushed the crap out of that with some fluid, uh, and then um, hooked it up to the slave and got that bled in. So that's all done. So we just gotta do brakes. Uh, and uh, maybe tidy up a couple of little things, like I said, the couple of hoses here and there. And then um, we'll put it back together, give it a good bath, and then we'll take it out on the road. I think that will be in this video because there's not a whole lot of material I got right now, considering all I did was fire it up and sink the carbs for you on this video. So we'll do that off camera. And then, like I said, once I get this thing buttoned up, It'll be a couple days from now, I think, but it'll be instantaneous for you. We'll, um, we'll get her on the road and take her for a quick shake. So until then, we'll catch you in about one second. The job that never ends. Okay, so where do we leave off? The other clips, I believe, were of um, getting it synced in and getting it running on the lift. Uh, as you can see right now, it's off the lift. All the body works back on. I mean, there wasn't much. I mean, these radiator doodads and the side covers mainly. And, uh, yeah, um, runs good. I'll show you under here in a second. I, I'm not going to take, take you for a ride on it because here's the problem. This is my reference to the job that never ends. The dang clutch slave is leaking. And it's coming from the slave, not from the banjos or the bleeder or anything. So, uh, you know, I'll show you what I mean here. The, the dang thing has got um, a K&L kit in it. The dang thing's got a K&L kit in it. And although the, oh, let me get my old fart bones down in here. The k &L kit, I don't think, is, is holding up too well on this. And what's happening is, this is leaking right from here. You can see the shiny. It's hitting this hose right here, and it's running down the hose. That's how I saw it, dripping on the floor here. So it's coming out between the, the um, clutch cover and the and the slave itself, but there's a little um, cutaway there for that purpose, so you see it leaking when it leaks. So it's unfortunate, but 
I'm going to have to let it drip for now. Hopefully it doesn't run out of fluid in the master. It's not that bad, but I'm not going to take it for a ride like this, just in case we have a all-out failure. I took it up and down the road and then parked it back here, and I wanted to do a little tuning, which is what I was going to talk to you about here next, because I had a little bit of a pop at idle, which I've cleared up. But yeah, so yeah, <laughs> this is not making me happy. But this is what we're going to do about it. I'm going to stop screwing around with the um, rebuild crap. And I've already ordered an OEM slave assembly from Parzilla. They had one in stock, but expedited shipping, so I'll probably get a Tuesday. Have this thing out of here Wednesday. But you're not going to see any more video on it because i got to move on. This is going to be the last video. Or this is the last video clip, or not even clips, the last video on this um, particular bike. But, um, yeah, she runs real good. Let me set you up in the stand. You can hear her start up. And, well, I don't need to put you in the stand for that. Well, actually, you know, let me show you this first. There's a couple of ways. You, there's two ways you can put these band clamps in. You can flip these around because these have a, um, a like, a dot in them. It's hard. Yeah, like this. See that? These have the, this little nub, and it goes into a hole in the clamp, so it clocks the clamp. Now, you can flip these around and have these screws up here, which I probably should have done. Uh, but I like to I like to look some of them better down. What happens is though the screw end gets in the way of getting up into where the uh, uh, slow screw is to adjust it with this guy right here, which I said I found my D my D tip, and uh, so I, I couldn't quite get past that. So what I did was I took and made a, a little adapter. I, I've run into this before, so I'm going to use this again. I took a quarter inch quarter. Um, just regular nut driver type um, bit, all right, one quarter, and I put it in a uh, ER32 collet, and uh, you know hex collet, and then I milled it back further, so essentially that hex is much further up because it stopped about you know there, maybe a quarter inch away, and then cut it shorter. So when you put it into the bit here, or into the not into the bit, but into the tool, it'll um, take your bit of choice and extend it out by I don't know five eighths of an inch or so and since it's a little sloppy because I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the dimensions but that's fine just stuff a little piece of paper towel in there because it doesn't have a detent the, the tips that go in here the bits rather have a little ball to detent them so you put a little piece of paper towel and uh, so that's how I did this side here because you don't need it on the other side because the clamps are facing differently so what I did was I, I brought out each slow screw quarter turn, one click on this, uh, and that cleared that up. The, the main problem was on the left bank. Um, I could hear the left side popping a little bit. and so But I brought them all out because I could just feel it. I could just feel that it was a little bit on the lean side at idle, and when you ramped it up and so forth. Now it's a lot better. All right, so now I'll set you up and we'll start it up and you can hear it yourself. Contact. Probably should turn the gas on. That's a lot better. She, she was struggling a little bit. Idle's right where we want it, about 1K. Took care of the problem with this switch by um, getting in there, just taking it, not taking it out, but just splitting this um, assembly and then getting up in there with some WD and working this thing back and forth, so that's good. All right, so um, summarize the work here. Uh, I'm gonna go over the highlights of what was a really a pain in the ass. The front forks were a real nightmare on these. I didn't film any of that because you didn't want to hear all the cuss words I came up with on that, all right? The right fork and the left fork on these Valkyries is different. And what you need is a special tool if you're going to take the fork, this fork, all the way down the bit. See, that's good. There's no leaks or anything. Looks great. They feel okay, but, you know, I don't ride a Valk regularly. And that special tool takes like a dampening spring out. 
And essentially what it is, is a, um, what are those called? Uh, can't remember what they're called, show you. One of these tools. One of these guys. Um, not a pin wrench, but a, I forgot what these are called. I'll come up with it and put it in the doobly right below where I'm talking here. And so I had one of these that fits. It's supposed to be 40 mil. It's really close to that. And then all I did was weld this on because it's a deep thing. You gotta you gotta slide it over the, um, uh, the uh, a rod. It's kind of the right side's got a rod that goes all the way down to a damper. This thing got a shorter rod that goes to this damper spring. This is a hydraulic damper, and that's a damper spring. Seems like it's more on the outstroke than the downstroke. This one seems to do the downstroke stuff dampening, and the other one upstroke, like when it comes up totally, like under acceleration that sort of thing and so you don't have to take that out to do the seals you can slide the tube right off of it the thing is you you take that apart and then it's a mother to get back together oh it is a mother because you got to get this tool pushed down against spring tension it's pretty fat short uh, spring and then get it to capture on a fine thread without cross threading it but I got it back in I torqued it up put the forks back in um, it calls for SS8 Honda oil, and I cross-referenced that to 10W, so I put some Bell Ray 10W in, it should be fine. So those were a real pain in the ass. The rest of it wasn't bad. Corrected a couple of small things as far as electrical goes. The main deal, of course, being the carbs and the brakes. The brakes were particularly problematic because they were so messed up. They were so froze up. I had to beat these um, front ones off L almost almost beat them to the point where you're worried about the rotors getting screwed up they were so because the rotors are worn pretty significantly in the center but they are not down below minimum thickness and those things were froze around a narrower part so you're beating against that as a real pain in the butt so I got them out and took them all apart um, all these brakes have new pistons new seals courtesy of of course brake crafters to rear as well uh, the clutch master, I think I mentioned, um, he bought a new assembly, so that's new, and I rebuilt this one. He had a kit for it, but it was the wrong kit. I had the right parts out of a VFR, a clutch ma uh, brake master zone, the kit, and the rubber was right, so I switched the rubber over to the piston that was in here, and it works perfect. And so no leaks, no runs, no errors. So the only problem we got right now, again, is that clutch slave is leaking, and I'm going to have to bring it back in because I'm going to put it aside right now and get on some other stuff uh, at a later time. And we'll, uh, like, I don't know, Tuesday or so, Wednesday. It won't take long to change that out, re-bleed it, and then this thing will be done for sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with the way it came out. Everything works. It looks a lot better because I washed it this morning. And uh, I was planning on deliver having the customer pick it up either today or tomorrow, what have you. Obviously, that's not going to be the case now. So, it is what it is. All right, folks, we're done with this one. Uh, you know the story, so I'm not going to beat that dead horse. We'll get it taken care of next week once I get a new slave in. Runs real well now. A little tweak on the slows. Not uncommon, especially on these sixes. I've run into it before. Without the uh, Motion Pro adjusting tool, though, it is a real bitch to get in there and adjust those things. It's possible, but it is a problem. So I'm really glad I found that little D tool, which was over underneath the tool. I'll show you where it was. <laughs> that little D tool that I spent uh, probably four hours looking for was stuck in my four inch machinist vise because I was sitting here when I dropped it apparently. It must have hit my leg and then bounced in there. And I took that machinist vise out and I used that to hold the forks upright while I worked on them, which I've done with the six inch vise, which is on the mill right now did that on the concourse if you see the concourse video on the forks I use the six inch vise for that so I just took that four inch vise out put the forks in it when I was putting that vise back all of a sudden it falls on the floor and I went you got to be kidding at least I found it was able to tweak it up a little bit and I'm happy that I was able to do that because it runs really really well it ran great before now it runs really great so yeah um, we're gonna close this one out not the, I don't think this is the greatest video content wise but hopefully hopefully you got something out of it all right that's about all I can say about this one and uh, you know if you like what you saw you need to stick around like the video that helps me out greatly as far as analytics go share subscribe ring the bell you get notified when I put more stuff up that more stuff I want to tell you about really quick I'm gonna revisit a project that 
let's just say, had gotten the best of me. You know which one I'm talking about? And I'm going to start filming that maybe even today. So watch for that video coming out. I'll explain the whole thing about what the situation was and is on that particular job, that particular project, uh, when that video comes out. So I guess until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>